So this adventure, we're heading to Haida Gwaii. It didn't go through the last ice age, so it's basically like the Galapagos of the north. You don't really get cell service all the time, and most people that I would tell about Haida Gwaii before I came here, I said, well, where's that? <laughs> I'm a writer. I care about the story and the people and places that make it. Action sports writing is brand new to me. It's tough, but it's worth it. My life is just like the camera in my hand. Focus on the most important aspects, capture the best moments, and if at first you don't succeed, take another shot. Here we are in Haida Gwaii. Yeah, we made it. Yeah, and I'm actually so excited because it's so beautiful here and it's so remote. So it's like there's a lot to do and a lot of opportunities to sell a story that maybe a lot of people wouldn't have access to. You no, know, it's from a photo standpoint, I think there's there's a lot I can do underwater as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think we have pretty good opportunities here for stories. I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to pull it off as a team. Yeah, I think so. I mean. The weather's good and and I'm excited. So that's all we really need. Awesome. Let's do it. So we met up with Haida Expeditions, James and Kuki. Took us down to Guayanas. And for me, I've always wanted to go to this place. We hopped on this uh, this boat and started cruising down and it's kind of windy out there. Uh, we can do the shallow water conditions of the Hecate. It's considered one of the most treacherous water ways in the world. I think the third worst. Cooks, I need you to just, we're almost off this. I need you to spot me. Guayhanas is, is a pretty sacred place among the Haida people. And that's, that's where they used to live. So Kuki, I'm gonna take us in slow and we can do a quick introduction to Skadans there for me. My grandfather is from here, my Chennai. I always like to say, close your eyes and imagine 100, 200 years ago of what life was like with our ancestors. This is the only house that is there's any evidence of anymore. But you could see how big it was. Standing there on these islands, watching the waves slowly kind of roll in, just surrounded by green and fog and water, I just felt like connected with the environment. And I, I can see why the Haida people want to protect and preserve what they have here because it's so special and it's so beautiful. After we toured Skidans, we headed down to Tanu, which is another village site. So welcome to Tanu. Uh, the proper name for Tanu is Tanu Ilnagai. There's roughly 25 to 26 longhouses and ruins here today. There was a well recorded in some of these longhouses in the corners. You didn't have to worry about Jardia back in the day. No deer, no beavers, no raccoons, no squirrels. So just the whole dog and probably lined with with boxes to get drinking water. And no walls. No walls. No, it's just solid six to eight inch thick cedar planks for walls and just open. short memorial pole, quite different than the other ones. It's a killer whale. You could see the tail, kind of oblong triangle here. You, here's where its eye is, right here, and its head. I 
probably had about a half hour left on the water, and we're all like eight of us. It was eight of us, wasn't it? Crammed into this tiny little cabin, like sardines in a little can. <laughs> and we're just going up and down, the waves are so big, and there's clouds rolling in, and it's raining, and you can't see out the windows to dry land where you're supposed to look when you're starting to feel nauseous because you're crammed into this foggy little cabin. And I almost lost my lunch everywhere. <laughs> The heat is on. Who will prevail, the kid or Taz? The kid needs a fish for his dins. Cause if he doesn't, then Tannis wins. <sighs> so Haida Expeditions, they really set us up. They uh, arranged two boats for us. I was expecting to just go out on, on one. Before we went out, uh, we thought it'd be fun to break into teams, as Mason and I often do. Well, there's two things sort of set up there. We shook on where um, most fish and biggest fish. Fishing on Haida Gwaii is special. It's the first place these fish come to feed from the deep ocean. They're hungry, they're wild, they're uh, pound for pound the best fighting fish out there. The kids got a fish on. Yeah, Taz, doesn't actually count if, unless you land it. And uh, maybe you should try setting your own hooks. No time for excuses. We have a bet to win, which we are. OK, tell them I'm, I'm getting on the rod then. Well, then we'll put our captain on the rod and we'll see what happens. I mean, we're landing our own fish over here. Old captain's asleep at the wheel, from what I recall. <laughs> That's getting getting uh, getting a little bit much, eh? We're gonna have to deal with this with fish. Take that, Tannis. <laughs> hey, Tannis, you're not gonna catch any fish sun tanning on the bow. You guys are gonna have to step your game up if you want biggest fish. Show us the fish. Hold it up. You heard me. He's attached to your rod. Well, you're deaf. <laughs> Hold it up. I mean, I, I came prepared with my waterproof housing and my wetsuit. So we got a fish online, and I, I thought I would take the opportunity to jump in. I like this. Never seen this before in my life. Watch the line, Watch the line bud. You come over here. We'll clear the line. I never seen that before. What's that? Chasing the salmon around. We're all free. We brought back eight fish. I'm just saying that's a lot of fish. <laughs> and the other guys brought back like what, six? <laughs> that's nothing. They ain't got nothing on us. Tannis' team got the most fish, but I got the biggest fish. <laughs> so you won that round. You owe me some money. You owe me some money. <laughs> we broke even. <laughs> I guess so. Should we shake hands? Got fish guts on my hands. Good. <laughs> So we woke up and it uh, turns out the waves didn't wake up. They were asleep. There were no waves that day, flat water, no surfing. <laughs> and so uh, we ended up going kayaking. It's not surfing, it's not the high energy uh, action sport that we were hoping for, but 
I love sea kayaking and it was just great to get out there on the water and just experiencing Haida Gwaii in that way, so. So after sea kayaking, Alan took us to this Haida canoe that had been left unfinished for whatever reason. Likely this canoe was finished when uh, someone died. Um, being the era of smallpox, they probably died sick rather than old. So we headed to the Haida Heritage Center and that has got to be one of the nicest buildings I think I've ever been in. Their museum has some pretty special treasures in it. There's a, an outdoor carving shed, and that's where they're working on this legacy pool. So carvers Jalin, Gwai, Edenshaw, and their apprentice Tyler are, are working diligently every day on this beautiful pool. Yeah, so what does this pool represent? Well, this pool was commissioned for celebrate the 20th uh, anniversary of uh, Canada and the Haida Nation working together to protect Guayanas. When I was looking at the, the stories to choose from, I uh, just looked at different, different uh, interesting things that were happening in Guayanas. And for instance, the bear here that I'm working on, um, you know, we have quite a few old stories of uh, grizzlies and you can see them showing up in the old totem poles, but uh, no grizzlies live here now. And, Archaeologist in um, Guayanas that uh, found grizzly bones in the caves, mm. and they dated to them, dated the bones to about 13,000 years. Wow! Sort of dates some of our stories, you know, at least that far back. While we were at the Heritage Center, um, a guy named Colin uh, just happened to be standing around and asked if. We wanted to go out in a canoe, and I was like, well, what do you mean a canoe? And he said, a traditional canoe, right in there. And I looked over, and beside beside the totem pole that Gwai and Jolin were carving were these two epic traditional Haida canoes, and we got to take one of them out, and there were, there were 10 of us paddling. Mason was not paddling. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing, but he wasn't paddling. They were calling him out. He's not paying attention? No, he's not even paddling. <laughs> Maybe he was flipping his hair. <laughs> Joking aside, we had to figure out a story to sell from this trip. It's going to be a bit different than most we'd worked on already. This has been a pretty successful trip for photos, I think. I mean, to be immersed in that much natural beauty, I was running out of memory space on my cameras, you know. Really? Every day. That's amazing. <laughs> Just shooting photos, <laughs> like, oh, well, what, I gotta take that picture. And How many that eagles one. are there in this place? <laughs> I know, there's a, there's a lot of eagle photos. Yeah. Like, even though they aren't action sports images, mm -hmm. It was still really interesting to, to explore that side of, mm -hmm. of photography, more of like a travel perspective. Totally. So I was thinking it might make sense to try and pitch um, maybe a piece on the legacy pole and what that means to Haida Gwaii, tie in a lot of the travel elements, like going to Skidance where the old poles are, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I know you got some great shots of the pole and on Skidance as well, so I don't know, I think that might be a neat story to pursue. It's been an amazing trip. I, I really do look forward to writing about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. And I'm gonna look forward to the photos too. Yeah, me too. I always look forward to your photos. Do you? I do, they're great. <laughs> Thanks. Our trip to Haida Gwaii wouldn't be complete without chatting with some local artists. I gotta find my, I gotta find my sweet spot, okay. It's a new drum.
Well, this is my uh, my carving studio. This is where I do my argillite work. It's kind of like my private work, really. It's uh, my private space here. I, all of my argillite work is done for private collectors, galleries. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite group of people to carve for? Oh, well, I, yeah, I think well, I'm my favorite. Yeah. My <laughs> yeah, I carve for my own, uh, you know, I, it's what I do, it's my lifestyle. You know, uh, it allows me to live my lifestyle, uh, which is here on Haida Gwaii. Mm -hmm. It was neat sitting in his shop talking about art and talking about like he's trying to learn Haida, which is, I think, awesome. Oh, it was really cool seeing him and so many other people too, just trying to preserve the language by learning it themselves. The world the same as the edge of a knife. While you are walking, watch your step. Otherwise you'll fall off the edge of the earth. <laughs> you know, we get the arge light in uh, near Skidigat. It's only found on Haida Gwaii. It's not a not an easy trip out of the 25 or more trips I made during my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Probably about three of them were relatively easy. Mm -hmm. Artistic talent runs deep here. We left Christian's studio to see what his cousin April was working on. I see you're working on a piece here right now. Maybe can you tell us a bit about what it is and how you thought to paint it? This particular piece is a, a journey piece, so it's about a life's journey. Uh, it could be any woman's or any person's journey in particular. It's using Haida symbolism to denote that journey and where the person is and that potentially, potential person could be myself. Mm -hmm. There were some pieces where I thought, oh, that's, you know, that's a nice picture and then you, you get a really close look at it. And it's like, actually, she painted that. For years, Explorer has been Canada's leading adventure travel magazine. And knowing that the editor, David Webb, is interested in hearing our Haida Gwaii pitch has us pretty stoked. Hello? Hi, David. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good, thanks. So, yeah, I'm Tannis. This is Mason. This is great. Thanks, thanks for taking the time to talk yeah. to us today. This is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, we really appreciate it. And I was thinking too, just looking at your contributor guidelines, the best way to go about pitching to you might be to make it in through the, the lowdown section. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that's sometimes what we, 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 uh, we recommend, but it, it depends. I'm, I'm always open to new writers. I'm always, I mean, new writers to explore, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. they, you know, we only do four issues a year. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a ton of space, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We have to be pretty, pretty picky sometimes and also be very careful to uh, make sure that our readers right across the country are getting something that's relevant to them. Well, we were thinking, I think there's, there's a lot going on up there as far as outdoor activity, as I'm sure you know, um, but we were thinking of also maybe using uh, like outdoor activity as a road to talking about some of the cultural stuff that's going on up there as well. No, absolutely. I think the cultural aspect would be have to be a vocal point. And uh, it's especially timely right now because the uh, the Haida Nation is about to raise the like a, the Guayanas Legacy Pole, which is the first pole to be raised in about 130 years, and it commemorates a 20-year relationship with the federal government and preserving Guayanas as well. So, just in terms of you know maybe a a destination piece, I'm starting to think right now of like um, a kayak trip to see the pole, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, it could definitely work actually. In order to really fill out that story, I think we'd probably have to go back to uh, see the pole actually being raised and have a photo of it at its location where it's going to be raised. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I'll, you know, I'll leave that up to you mm -hmm. for where and what to do for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how are we going to get back to Haida Gwaii is the question. I don't know, but we probably should. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Maybe there's a way to connect with someone who will help fund our flights up there or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we definitely need to go back. Like, sounds like he wants a story, but we 
don't have necessarily the right content to. Mm -hmm. And like we said, it's not complete. Yeah. We're going back to Haida Gwaii. Do you have time in August? I make time. Cool. After we had done the explore pitch, a really good opportunity landed on my plate literally hours after we had that conversation about doing a story. For me, it's sort of a tough decision because it's like, okay, here's, you know, here's a chance to, to make some, some good money at home. This story, I would potentially have to pay my way to get there, and it would be you know, several days of, of work, and I don't even know what it would be worth once we sold the story, if we sold the story. So there's an uncertainty there. You know, finding that balance between that. And I wish I could say yes to everything. So that's kind of a, a tough place to, to be. After we heard from the company that wanted to contract him out on the exact same day that we were going to go to Haida Gwaii to cover the rest of the Legacy Pool story, I just said, you know, you do what you have to and I support you no matter what because I know what I would do in your shoes, but I know what I want you to do to help make this Explore story happen. So uh, I, think, I think I know what he's gonna do and I think it's the right choice for him professionally. And ultimately I think if the Explore story is meant to happen, I'll make it happen. Yeah.